Hi guys, Asmo here and today I have for you tips and tricks for completing the capstone dungeon. In the background you're going to see the footage from when I completed it. I'm playing a marksman rogue using a combination of penetrating shot and rapid fire with poison imbuement. So that's gonna be what you're seeing in the background. I'm gonna commentate some of the fights and give you tips and tricks for, for some of the specific bosses and uh, different fights in this dungeon as well. Uh, but first let's focus on a general tips that can help anybody number one tip i think uh, i would give is pretty obvious but it's the level the level difference is really really big if you are more than three levels below the capstone dungeon or b below the monsters you're fighting in general you're starting to get really really big penalties you get penalties to your defense and your offense and you really notice your damage just going down really really low your defense going down really really low you are you're running the risk of getting one shot if you're not building, building big defense if you're playing for example softcore and you're not focusing, focusing on defense some of these attacks of the big knights can one shot you um, and your damage is gonna feel pretty bad if you don't don't have really really good gear so uh, I would recommend getting to level 50 or I, I was at level 49 because I knew I'm gonna hit level 50 while I'm doing the dungeon and I completed all of my uh, other like all of the other things that I wanted to do in world tier 2 uh, so that's why I just went at level 49 but I recommend either 49 or 50 just to have an easy time completing it uh, sure if you complete it at slightly lower level then that means you're getting into world tier 4 into world tier 3 slightly earlier so you're gonna have a little bit more time to farm up the gear that is uh, like sacred and you're gonna have uh, a little bit uh, more experience coming in so you're gonna get this, these levels faster but this dungeon is gonna slow you down a lot and it's gonna feel very very difficult um, if you're playing hardcore especially I definitely recommend going to level 50 uh, once you're at the level of the monster they are much easier uh, you just get really really big penalty if you are at least like severely below the level of the monsters I entered the dungeon just to check it check it out at level I think 45 and I had noticeably like weaker damage and I was noticeably squishier than when I actually started doing it at level here 49 um, so that's why uh, I recommend leveling to level 50 a number two tip I can give you is to gear up so uh, if, if you want to gear up very very effectively and very efficiently before doing the capstone dungeon do all of the dungeons that give you codexes that you want for your character so that is something that i recommend doing after the campaign so if you end up the, uh, like like me for example i finished the campaign at level 45 and then the next thing i did was to go around the world just look at my codex go through the uh, codexes that i want go through the aspects i want and then simply uh, uh, like left click or right click whatever the dungeon to mark it and go to a dungeon do these dungeons one at a time and that will give you some renown it will give you gear because the best source of gear is basically just uh, doing dungeons and it will also get you the aspects that you're going to be able to uh, to upgrade your gear with right so you're going to be able to set up your character even just like simple like defensive aspect that gives you barrier or something like that is gonna make a very big difference for the boss fights for example so i definitely recommend finishing these dungeons um, in the first part of the capstone dungeon you can see here i'm killing these uh, big revenant knights uh, these are uh, these uh, elite monsters that uh, give you the anima which is like this uh, this purple little essence thing that drops and that's basically the first part of the dungeon so that's the only thing that you need to kill um, the other things you don't need, need to necessarily kill however they give pretty good experience so it's pretty worth like clearing all the big packs in this dungeon and after you have uh, after you have the uh, completed your dungeons before the capstone to get your all of your aspects i recommend upgrading your gear right so like at least put like two upgrades on every single piece of gear that you have and um, one of the things that i noticed is gonna be pretty limiting for crafting the gear very early on for like the early upgrades is gonna be silver ore so when you're traveling around the world always make sure to pick up the ore you're gonna see on the sides like this rock that you can click that's gonna give you like iron and silver ore especially the shiny ones are gonna give you some of the better ores so uh, make sure that you're doing that uh, because uh, unless you're doing like side quests you're not gonna have uh, enough of it to upgrade all of your gear if you're not like diligently picking them up but it takes uh, very little time especially when you're like on your way riding to the dungeons and stuff like that you're gonna be able to pick up some uh, ore and this silver ore is gonna help you 
because it's required for like the third upgrades, especially for things like jewelry and stuff like that. So that's going to be one of those uh, things that uh, I recommend picking up. So especially when you have like a mount later on, just riding around for, to the objectives, always be on the lookout for these so that you can click them. You can click them while you are mounted. Uh, here you can see I leveled and I'm looking for what where to put uh, the skill point because I really haven't like my build is pretty complete. If you're interested in the build, you can check out one of my previous videos. I have a, a full guide for this, uh, plus also like a leveling uh, tips video that I released recently. So you can check that out. But uh, the build feels really, really good. Uh, the single target is good. The um, the clear is good. I watched a lot of people like try penetrating shot, for example, and really nobody understands that you need to play penetrating shot and rapid fire. Like I've seen so many people play penetrating shot just by itself which uh, like if you're gonna have if you have a good weapon it's gonna have good damage ish like it's gonna have about the same damage as like many other uh, builds but really to have like a really good single target damage you're gonna see like the last boss for example how easy the last boss is going to be for me and i didn't really have a good weapon this weapon was like staying with me for a really long time and bow is also i think inferior to crossbow i think crossbow is uh, really the way to go because you really want that slower weapon for the attacks to be more impactful and be more likely to one shot monsters it just feels much better uh, with a bow plus also we are using a basic skill that doesn't use our ranged weapon because we are using puncture um, so that's why the, the attack speed on the bow doesn't really help us that much. So here we've got the first boss on uh, of, of this. So this is the uh, High Council, uh, which has Sacred Physician, Inquisitor, Commander and Champion. So um, here I killed the Champion first. I was focusing on the Champion first, like just killing the biggest guy. But I think that's a mistake. I think you don't want to do that. I think you want to kill the physician because the physician is the guy that's going to heal them. I think he's like bringing them back and resurrecting him as well. So you want to kill the physician first. And uh, also the Lord Commander, uh, when you kill the commander, it brings up the, brings the ads, right? So unless you need them for, I need the ads for something, but this is not Path of Exile. You get, uh, you get uh, potions just for hitting the bosses. So you want to make sure that you kill the physician first because you can see the Lord Commander is back, right? So we want to make sure that we kill the, um, the physician first. So here is where I noticed, I think, oh shit, these guys are getting resurrected. So I need to kill the physician first, right? So that was my mistake for doing that. Um, and basically need to target the physician first, try to avoid these attacks. This, uh, like when you see the screen getting dark, that's like days. One of these guys, I think it's the um, Grand Inquisitor. He's doing this uh, like AOE where it dazes you. When you're dazed, basically you're, um, you're like kind of blinded, like your field of vision is much smaller and you cannot attack, like you cannot use abilities. So you basically have to walk out of that, right? So the, the physician is the last one left uh, for some reason <laughs> when I was uh, supposed to target it first. Um, so that's why this fight took uh, that long because I just had very wrong targeting. Um, and after killing this, there's basically just a straight up second dungeon attached to this one. You just use a teleport um, and then you go into this area and you basically need to kill everything. So this dungeon is pretty nice for this build because you have really big packs. This build is has really, really nice clear when there's a lot of monsters. It is very fun to like run around the packs and spawn the storms. I have uh, one of the legendary powers that spawns storms that uh, proc on lucky hit and I get a very high chance for lucky hit. So I consistently proc them. When there's like a big pack and just got like a storm raining on the monsters um so the the by the way people were asking also in the comments of the last video like when do i use a rapid fire when do i use penetrating shots so hopefully you can see from this footage when i do that and of course i don't use them perfectly but usually a penetrating shot you use when you have multiple monsters that you're hitting but when you have like one or maybe two monsters remaining then you want to use rapid fire because it's simply the higher single target damage option um, I'm probably going to invest into some more cooldown reduction in this build as well because the poison imbuement is extremely powerful. Just, it adds so much damage. Um, uh, but normally the play pattern is basically you... Um, 
you use the puncture three times for to get the combo points because it does increase the damage by a lot plus you get to spread vulnerable on the enemies um, and then you use either penetrating shot or the rapid fire uh, and that's basically it. We got dash for mobility. We've got shrouds because I don't have the uh, legendary yet that would give me shrouds on crit and that's gonna be really really nice to get uh, later on when I find it. Um, I will replace the shrouds with conceal. Concealment is very very important. I recommend either having concealment for the for to, to break the um, CC on you or having the legendary power which gives you unbreak or like unbreak unstoppable sorry it's unstoppable gives you unstoppable whenever you become uninjured while CC'd so when you're CC'd and you get like below 35% HP you're gonna become unstoppable automatically so there's like a legendary power like that that you can find in fractured peaks in a dungeon so you can get it very very early basically the only situation where I can imagine you dying is gonna be when you're CC'd uh, because that's it's gonna be where you cannot move right and uh, just jump around the monsters because otherwise you can just walk around the monsters and as you can see like I'm not really taking much damage and whatever damage I'm taking uh, I'm getting uh, healed by the potion so I got some regeneration outside of combat and outside of combat I mean I mean um, like whenever I wasn't hit recently which will pair nicely with dodge so that's gonna be something uh, good later on uh, but I don't I'm not investing into that now then I got some um, life on kill which is really nice while clearing uh, but it doesn't help you on bosses but for bosses I actually have a legendary power I have a codex that gives me um, I think it's 10% chance to drop a health potion whenever I hit a vulnerable enemy and because I always hit vulnerable enemy when I'm fighting a boss then it gives me just 10% chance to drop a health potion when I'm fighting a boss so that's a very very good power I haven't noticed it proking very very often actually but I do notice that I'm dropping more health potions in general so I'm always topped up and that's basically one of the ways to sustain this it's funny because coming from PoE like I'm playing an archer uses poison that uses poison and um, also it relies on flasks right so like pathfinder toxic rain stuff like that so this is actually very similar to like a scour scourge arrow uh, skill from Path of Exile, so I'm in a very familiar territory. It just turns out that these builds in general are very very quick, right? Like the the way that it works mechanically, the build is just very very quick. This is gonna be one of the last packs here, and as you can see, we are melting it. Like I've seen people uh, do this dungeon, and I've seen the damage of different builds. Um, and this is me with like a bad weapon. Like keep in mind, this is me using a shitty weapon like I have a really bad bow in here I should have a good crossbow not a bad bow in here um, I did get uh, a good uh, crossbow upgrade after this uh, like after I, I finished this dungeon uh, in world tier 3 I got a crossbow that basically was double the damage of the bow that I had right so absolutely insane damage and this is the last boss Last boss is pretty straightforward. If you have some sustain, you're gonna be fine. There are gonna be situations where you're taking a lot of damage. He has these like multiple swipes that he does. I'm just tanking it with the barrier because I'm prioritizing dealing damage as much as possible. And then he has these like swipes that are like telegraphed on the ground. Um, there is this. And then he has another one where he does it very, very quickly, like three times in a row. So if you dodge like one of them, you're gonna be probably fine. Uh, so yeah, this is it. This one, two, and three. So I got hit by one of them. It took like... I don't know 25 percent of my hp or something like that so if you dodge one of them you should be totally fine um so yeah just focusing on killing the boss and that's it so hopefully uh i've said something helpful uh just be prepared take your time that's the main advice level get your codexes uh, and finish the codexes from the dungeons unless you're already level 50 and you took your time and went through the campaign very slowly then you're gonna be fine but uh, assuming a lot of people are gonna be coming from world tier one uh then you might have to level a little bit more and that's gonna help you a lot there's really big 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 penalty if you're fighting monsters under leveled plus every single like every single level early on gives you so much power uh, because your character is still pretty low level so it's very very noticeable uh, so that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching and see you next time guys